um, I spoke about phases of treating trauma, you know, we, there are three phases. First of all, the stabilizing phase. And this phase can take months or even years sometimes, you know, especially when trauma is, when there is more than one trauma and when the first trauma dates back in early childhood, of course. So the stabilizing phase, what are we doing in this space? phase. Of course, we have to ensure physiological, physiological needs. So, ask your client, um, are you sheltered? Are you in an living in an apartment? Because refugees, for, for example, sometimes aren't yet. So, um, do you eat? Do you drink? Can you sleep? Is there somebody around? Is there somebody who takes care of you? Do you go to work? You know, all these questions we have to have to be answered, of course. Then normalizing interventions. Some clients suffer from symptoms they never had before. For example, PTSD clients. Suddenly they feel different than before and they don't know what's going on in their system. They don't know why they can't function anymore. And for this, you have to tell them that almost every human being would react in the same way as the client does in confrontation with PTSD. Because, uh, because something happened in our life which overloads our system. And that's the reason why we don't recognize each other anymore afterwards, why we aren't able to function. You can read it in the manual later if you want. There are some definitions about trauma and about PTSD clients. So read them to them if you want. And then they know, then they feel reassured. Ah, it's not me who, who, who is crazy, but it's a situation who is crazy, or who was, which was crazy. People coming back from war. The beloved people don't recognize them anymore, can't talk to them anymore, no. they can't communicate anymore, they get depressed, they aren't capable to work anymore, for example. Did you add something? Yeah, like, like a normal reaction of an abnormal situation. That's it, mm. that's a normal reaction to an abnormal mm. situation. Mm. And that's a normalizing intervention that you say, okay, for now, it's absolutely fine and normal that your body and your system reacts like it does, but later it will be easier for you. It doesn't stay like it is now, okay? Of course, here. Psychoeducation, I love this. <laughs> you know about it, we spoke about it already, okay? So the body symptoms are expressing what is captured in the soul or in the, s in the system. So they have to know about it. Some people don't want to know anything about it. But that's your job as a, as a coach or a psychotherapist to, to uh, get them to know. Activation of inner resources might be useful, you know, such as belief, a safe place, of course, trust or strength could be an inner resource. For other people, it's religion for example, or spiritual uh, issues. You can activate external resources. So ask them, uh, are you within a social surrounding? Do you have a family? Do you have children? Is somebody at home who cares for you? Or your private partner in life, you know? Or colleagues at your workplace might be a resource for them, an external one. Or interdisciplinary cooperation might be of great use. You know, I've got one client who I send regularly to a physiotherapist to get a massage because sh she is single, she is living with her parents, she's more than 40 years old, and she is lacking of, uh, of being touched. And it's so important to be touched in life, you know, or to be hugged. I think there's, there's a proverb that we need seven hugs a day 
to be happy, something like that. <laughs> so afterwards, you come all to me and hug me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. So interdisciplinary cooperation, like uh, um, physiotherapists, like um, psychiat psychiatrists, because some people need uh, medication, of course, neuroleptica or, or antidepressiva or anxiolytica or something like that. I even collaborate with um, pharmacy in the, in the, you know, in 50 meters away is a pharmacy because sometimes the client comes um, and no, normally when she takes antidepressiva, she's fine, but sometimes she forgets to, to go to her psychiatrist and it happens that she came and she really was in a bad, uh, in a bad state. So I just called my, my uh, pharma, pharma pharmacy. pharmacist and then she got uh, her medicine and afterwards I called this um, psych psychiatrist and he sent a fax to the, uh, to the pharmacist. Yeah. And that's, that's important to have all these numbers or institution where people can go when they are to to when they when they when they are near of um, of um, suiciding themselves, you know, because you aren't available all the time, and it's good that you are available because of course you have a private life. So you can give them numbers of institutions where they can go, or think about your holiday when you are in holiday. Either you send them to a colleague or you have uh, numbers of institutions available where they can get help. Excuse me, just pop that on. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't function anymore. Kaput. He, speak, he speaks German, great. Okay, <laughs> so what else? <coughs> yes. And then, of course, this, this phase can, can last, uh, this stabilizing phase can last for months or even sometimes years. With some people, you never come to a process, the reprocessing phase. And it's good that they say the book is closed and they want the book closed. Sometimes so terrible things <coughs> have happened to a person that they don't want to face these terrible things. And it's okay. You know, people who survived the Holocaust, for example, or who have been in a similar, um, in a similar place, you know, they, they often don't want to talk about it. And there are people, I know a story about one lady and she survived the Holocaust and after years she came back, she went back to her home, to her family, and suddenly she realized that her husband had married again, had children and everything. So she went away and did really close the book because it's so hard to face it. And then she decided, okay, new chapter. That's a decision. And that was part of her self-healing system, not to face all these sad things, of course. Then comes the processing phase, EMDR, as you know it already, a bit better than yesterday morning, <coughs> and which you will learn in the next module, that's a CIPS, which stands for Conflict, Imagination, Painting, Bilateral Stimulation. It's from Christa Diegelmann and it's based on, based on the Katatymus Bilderleben, Karl Leuner and art therapy and bilateral stimulation by music. We will provide bilateral music for you for this session. And then of course, after having processed the situation, the traumatic events, then comes the integration phase. And integration means that you, the situations that you have gone through that you will that you are able to integrate them into your life and that maybe 
that this illusionment is important, and that you reorient, find reorientation in your reality. There are people, for example, who are separated, and the one who has been left alone says, okay, I'm sure he will come back. He will come back to me after a while. And she waits and waits and waits. And, you as a, and, and he won't come back. So you as a therapist can advise then such a client or ask this client, how long do you want to wait? When do you think it's enough to wait? And maybe then they say, okay, I will wait half a year or three, three more months. But then they have to take a decision to step in their own life again and not to wait anymore and spend their wonderful lifetime with waiting, which is of no use, you know. That's this. <coughs> so, and as a last chapter, I spoke already about stabilization and resource techniques. It's good, of course, in the very beginning, to name the traumatic situation. Now, if, if a client is capable to name the traumatic situation, that's already a big step. Not the first step. The first step is the decision taken before, you know, I need therapy. I need to go somewhere in a practice to get rid of this trauma. And then they talk about it. And maybe it's the first time that they talk about it. And this, this helps already because you are witnessing what they have lived through. And maybe you are, you, you are the first person who witnesses it because they have been alone with this. They have felt lonely with what they have experienced. And now they have not only a listener, they have two eyes, they have two more ears, and they have your compassion. Mm? And that's fine for them, and that helps already. Normalizing interventions here again, psychoeducation again, trust firming, forming framework. We talked about it uh, yesterday already. So information about the setting. We meet each other here once uh, a week, for example, and you do your homework, and in case you can't come, you just tell me a day before, and things like that. Or the most important aspect in the work of Rogers, empathy, congruence, and unconditional positive regard, which is so important in the trauma therapy. You do resource work, you know, as you did already resource work yesterday here. And some of the clients need more resource exercises than others. And some don't need them. But you will see, you will sense it. Imagination techniques might be of help. Um, this is, this, this is, no. Disassociation as a technique you know, sometimes it's a technique to dissociate. It's a technique which is named screen technique. So don't identify with it. If it wasn't you, but if it was on a movie, and if I give you now the, in your hand, the, what is it? Remote control. Remote control, the Fernbedienung in German. And you can, you can go, f go f fast, faster or, or forward, you can go back, you can stop it, and you can go slow motion, whatever. Or you switch in another program. That's a technique, okay, you can apply in order to help the client not to be overwhelmed with it. These are techniques. Or grounding techniques, body work, parts. We are working with positive ego states sometimes which is lovely. You will get to know about them more in our EMDR advanced module. The meta position, hmm? like in, in NLP, where we step out of 
identifying. We step into an observer role, and that's similar to the meta position. Or the Beck's cognitive therapy, or Alice, the RET, rational emotion, emotional therapy. We work with metaphors. We work with humor, laughing, and positive psychology. Nothing new, okay? It's all well now. Do you apply all these things from time to time? Yes, you do. You're nodding. Fine. Okay. What else? Clients' resources. They are general resources, existential resources, body resources, achievement resources, external and internal resources. Yeah. Internal resources. Maybe maybe my my breath or my my my, my muscles or my, my cells or everything is fine in my body. Maybe um, my spiritual aspect in my life. External resources, maybe my car, my partner, my work, my money. My bank account, <laughs> body resources, yes, my strengths. I'm going regularly in a fitness trainer. I'm a strong person. I'm not weak. I've got energy. I've got my power. I'm healthy. My body is healthy. Yeah, everything which can suit as a serve, which can serve as a resource for your client, is a resource doesn't have to be your own resource. But it, if it's a resource of a client, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's important, it's worthful. That's it. And so we see, do we have to put the stress on the stabilization phase in a deeper way? Or do we sense our client already as a resourceful person? And if we aren't sure, we can ask them. And we will find out if we do the exercise, my, my capabilities, strengths, and talents. Then you will get to know. Are they telling you, do, 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 I'm good in, do, 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 I'm fine in, <laughs> or do they say, oh, mm, me, good things about me, no idea. Then you know this work has to be done, OK? Think of yesterday. Was it easy for you to do this exercise? It depends. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes. And it depends not only on our experience, but it depends on our, on our um, in German it's Tagesform, on our, on our constitution today. Maybe your constitution today is different from the constitution tomorrow. So it's up to the constitution state. If you aren't in a resourceful state, of course, it's more difficult to speak about your resources because your resources aren't conscious in that moment. They are somewhere in the back. And afterwards, maybe hours later, when you are relaxing at home in front of a glass of wine or whatever, then, ah, I forgot to mention this and that. That's normal too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's this. The stabilization. And last but not least, I've got an out view here for module two. <coughs> In case you want a book or you want to register for module two. We have seven protocols based, of course, all on the standard protocol with slight changes or additions, such as future pace, for example. Some of these protocols are more detailed than the standard protocol. But be aware of the fact that with all these protocols, you train 
the basic protocol. You, s you always train the standard protocols. We've got the current anxiety protocol, a protocol about a single traumatic event, a phobia protocol, a protocol about grief, about a recent traumatic event. Here the only difference is that a recent traumatic event in comparison to a single traumatic event can be uh, remembered in a more detailed form because it's recent, of course. And then we have got an illness and somatic disorders protocol and a protocol about unwanted behavior, which doesn't necessarily have to do with trauma, but it's for everyday patterns. I like this very much, unwanted behavior. And I'm sure everybody of you has something to be worse processed. <laughs> Yeah, and then of course it's SIPS, which we do next week, next uh, module. So in case you want to register for this module two, it would be fine if you could bring colored pens. Yeah, that's this. And now it would be fine to just speak about a few other things for the next modules. So we don't need the camera anymore.